Hello and welcome back to Vidorama, where we remember the VHS releases of the past in graphic detail. My name's Avron Jones. I'm an artist and each month on this channel I paint a tribute to a movie that we rented on video back in the day. Now I thought I would kick off the new year by inviting all you lovely people out there in Videoland to choose the first painting of the year. So I went on the Vidorama Facebook group and I created a poll. The options were Terra Train from 1980 or Night of the Comets from 1984. Votes were being cast and it looked like Terror Train was going to be a clear winner until a certain somebody rallied for Night of the Comet. Hey everybody, hi, it's Kelly Maroney, Samantha in Night of the Comet and Allison in Chopping Mall. I'm here today to encourage you to vote for Night of the Comet for it to be the next drawing Arfun Jones does because I love, love, love what he did with Chopping Mall. I just think it's charming and fantastic and looks 3D and it's brilliant. And I would love to see him do the same thing for Night of the Comet, if possible. But only if he gets the vote. So I'm here to personally encourage you to vote for Night of the Comet because you know it's going to be fantastic, whatever he does. I don't know if a zombie or a cheerleader or I don't know what will deliver a drink or something else entirely. And um, I want to be there for that. I hope you do too. So please vote, vote early, vote often for Night of the Comet. That's my two cents. We'll see. Unsurprisingly, Night of the Comet's won, and by a resounding majority. If you voted for Terror Train, don't worry, that train will be coming into the station later this year. So, without further delay, and by popular demand, let's paint a tribute to Night of the Comet from 1984. Okay then, the colours I'm using today are Mars Black, Titanium White, Blue Lake, and Opera Rose. As ever, I will be applying the detail with pens. So, Night of the Comet. It's a terrific movie. It starts with everyone preparing to witness the return of a comet, which has not been seen from Earth for over 65 million years, around the time of the extinction of the dinosaurs, in fact. Following morning, 18-year-old Reggie and her sister Sam discover that they are the only people still alive as everyone else has been reduced to calcium dust by the comet. They wander around what they believe to be a deserted Los Angeles but it's not deserted, there are a number of zombies with a compulsion to eat flesh wandering about. They come across another survivor, Hector, and the three of them try to avoid zombies and scientists that want to harvest untainted blood. A cult movie? Absolutely, and wonderfully 80s in its design, its fashion, hair, and its music. And I'm delighted to finally have this opportunity to paint it for the channel, because I love this movie, and I know I'm not alone in this opinion, as many of you also expressed your fondness for it during voting. Hey, Mr. Jones, all right here, and we'd like to see Night of the Comet. No, oh, no, we're not voting for Terror Train. I don't want to see that David Copperfield shirt ever again. How can you even hear me? You don't even have ears. Hey, what's up? This is Joe from the Movie Dumpster Podcast, and I gotta go with Night of the Comet. Aloha, Brother Arfan from Arizona. Now, because Munchie wasn't on the ballot, and I can't vote for Munchie, then I'm gonna vote for Night of the Comet. Happy New Year, and gambatane on all your new artwork, my brother. Aloha. Hi there, my name's John, John H. Shelton. I'm um, a kaiju fan, a uh, fan of all kind of cult things, uh, like Godzilla, like my Johnny Cash, uh, like animals as well. Uh, my channel is John H. Shelton, and uh, Avron, I'd like to see you paint Night of the Comet, please. Night of the Comet. If I may interject here, just so I can explain what I'm doing, now with the comet's tail finished, I'm masking off most of the painting with this sheet of paper, simply to protect what I've just done. And then with this regular toothbrush, I will add stars. I simply brush the bristles with my thumb and it flicks the paint on. It creates fine dots. It's a basic method, but most effective when painting a solar system. Hey everyone, I'm Jonathan Knight from the YouTube channel B Movie Madness, in which I review B movies of all kinds. And both me and Duke, think it would be awesome if your next tribute painting was from the amazing cult classic Night of the Comet. Can't, I'm looking forward to it. 
Hey Arfon, Karen here from the YouTube channel Ocean Chicks Films. I do horror and sci-fi movie reviews, and I heard that you do recommendations for your paintings. I would love to see you do up Night of the Comet from 1984 as this month's painting. I love this film. It's a cult classic and one of my favorites. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. So what are we voting on? What Afron draws next? Eh? So I'm... I mean, whoops, you want it, I'll take, you've got it, it's totally died that actually, but it actually makes my life better, so it's just gone flying out there, Night of the Comments, my choice, um, let's see, it's fixed, this is an old arrow one where I used to get the DVD with it, don't get many of these now, do I actually see Night of the Comments that often, definitely a cult following, artwork on Arrow, I'd be interested to see what Mr. Arthron Jones does, what he does, that'd be cool. Oh, that'd be really cool to see what he does. That's my choice for him anyway. But that's because I have choice. I have to make a choice. What he should be doing, check out cover to cover, check out my tournament review. Yes, I'm invading your channel, Afron. Is you need to do artwork for the tournament. Come on, come on. Now, you are an amazing artist. I am going to give you some praise. These bad boys, like literally amazing artwork. But if you do not, do not. Do not do it. Very soon, that will happen to your books, and you are going to get it. And I'm going to feed it to the duck. So, yeah, for now, do unite the comments, but you better be doing the tournament soon. Yes, enjoy this video. Hi, I'm Jen. And I'm one of Arfon's biggest fans. He's done a lot of great art for my fanzines and I just came to respect him as an amazing artist. And if you're not following him, you need to get up on it. Arfon Jones, he's incredible. Also, while I'm here, I want to respectfully request that he go ahead and do a Night of the Comet artwork piece for me or for everyone because I just love that movie so much and of course I love Kelly Maroney so please Arfon I'm voting for Night of the Comet thank you see what I mean everybody loves this movie Night of the Comets was written and directed by Tom Eberhardt who had previously written and directed Soul Survivor Inspired by the movie Target Earth from 1954 and the Twilight Zone episode Where Is Everybody, he wrote a similar story but one that featured valley girls that found themselves at the end of the world. Eberhardt was working on PBS specials at this time and working with teenage girls and he asked them how would they cope if the world suddenly ended and he found them to be somewhat upbeat about it until faced with the prospect of no longer having boyfriends. And so he wrote a script called Teenage Comet Zombies. At first, the studio was reluctant to produce it, but having scored a hit with Valley Girl the previous year, the movie was put into production, albeit with a relatively small budget. Valley Girl's writers and producers Andrew Lane and Wayne Crawford served as producers on this movie, and it's worth noting that Valley Girl is referenced throughout. We see the movie's posts on the wall of the theatre, and we also see the movie's soundtrack album at the radio station. The movie falls into various categories, but not intentionally. Many regard this to be a Christmas movie as it sat during the run up to Christmas, but this was simply because the movie had gone into production in November and they knew that the Christmas decorations would already be up at locations, so they set the story December to simply save money. But it's certainly an end of the world movie, one that harks back to such movies as Vincent Price's Last Man on Earth and Charlton Heston's Omega Man. Essentially the same story based on Richard Matheson's novel I Am Legend. One of the things that this movie does so well is creating desolation. We feel that Reggie and Sam are all alone with its abandoned Los Angeles streets and cityscapes. Which were actually filmed at times when there wasn't much traffic. Filmed between the stoplights turning red. Very effective and almost certainly influenced such movies as 28 Days Later. And of course the other thing that this movie has going for it is its cast, several accomplished actors. It's very much a character based movie and the story mostly focuses on the two sisters, uh, their relationship and the way they adjust to the world ending. So with that in mind I wanted them to be the main focus of this painting. When casting both sisters Eberhardt was keen to have the actors look like sisters, but it didn't quite work out like that. For the part of this character, Reggie, we have the amazing Catherine Mary Stewart. 
Originally from Canada, Stewart started out taking jazz dance lessons before moving to London to study dance and performing arts. And after a chance audition, she landed the starring role in The Apple, released in 1980, before going on to star in the soap opera Days of Our Lives. She's also known to many for being Maggie in The Last Starfighter, which was released the same year as Night of the Comet, in fact. Catherine Mary Stewart is great in this movie. She brings strength, humour and realism to the character. After this movie, she was originally cast as Heather McLeod in Highlander, but despite having travelled to the UK and attended costume fittings, sadly there was a union issue and the part was recast. But she went on to star in Weekend at Bernie's in 1986 and The Annihilator the same year. She was in Night Flyers in 1987, Psychic in 1991, and all the while appearing in countless television series such as Knight Rider and The Outer Limits. But this is a very brief biography of her career, mind. Uh, it's in no way comprehensive. And then we have this lovely lady, Kelly Maroney, playing Samantha. Kelly Maroney loved movies and wanted to pursue acting, and she had a break in soaps starting out on Ryan's Hope in 1979. She was on the show for three years before auditioning for the lead in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. She didn't get that part, but she was instead cast as Cindy the cheerleader and when that movie was released in 1982 she was offered the opportunity to return to Ryan's Hope, but she turned it down to pursue movies and she auditioned for Night of the Comet. She actually auditioned for the part of Reggie, but she was encouraged to audition for the role of Samantha instead. An interesting side note, another actor was up for this part and that was Heather Lennonkamp who would find famous Nancy in the Elm Street series that same year. The reason this is interesting is that Kelly Maroney had also auditioned for the part of Nancy. Keeping on the Elm Street theme briefly, David B. Miller worked as the movie's makeup effects designer and Miller is the man responsible for Freddy Krueger's look. But going back to Kelly Maroney, she had actually been offered a role as Jeff Daniel's love interest in Woody Allen's The Purple Rose of Cairo, but that project had to be put on hold. And by the time it was on again, production had already started on Night of the Comet and she was fully committed. Everyone loves Sam. She was instructed by Eberhardt to play Sam like Carol Lombard's character in My Man Godfrey. Naturally, I had to have her holding a gun. I often see people complaining that there are no strong female leads in movies. Well, I'm not sure what movies they've been watching. I grew up watching movies like this. Eberhardt famously wanted Uzis for the now iconic scene. Much to his disappointment, he was given Mac-10s instead. I'm no expert, but apparently the Mac-10 has a reputation for jamming, and that's just what happened. Having anticipated this and wanting to keep the scene going, he told Maroney to say the infamous line about Daddy buying them Uzis if the gun should jam. Thank you. Pardon me while I have a little break. In fact, I'll take this opportunity to thank the Vidorama Video Club members. I thank them for supporting this project. If you'd like to become a Vidorama Video Club member, you'll find a link in this video description to the Patreon page. There are all sorts of rewards to be had. There are monthly hand-drawn sketch cards, Vidorama Video Club badges, Vladorama stickers, a member-only print, commissioned ink drawings, behind-the-scenes content, and your name in future Vidorama videos. Follow the link and find out more. Right. Back to work. I'm just going to shield the painting with this makeshift stencil because one single miscalculated paint splatter could derail the entire project and potentially make a grown man cry. Returning to Kelly Maroney's career, she is another that went on to have an extensive resume after this movie. She was in Zero Boys and of course the brilliant Chopping Mall in 1986. Uh, be sure to check out my Chopping Mall tribute by the way. Having starred in Knights of the Comet and Chopping Mall, her place in the Scream Queen Hall of Fame was secured. She would work with Jim Wanowski again on Big Mama 2 in 1987, Knots of This Earth in 1988, uh, also be sure to check out my Knot of This Earth tribute. She was also in Transylvania Twist in 1989, Sorority House Massacre 3, Hard to Die in 1990, Owen oh, Healer in uh, 2012. She's still working in both television and movies today, but let's face it, 
Kelly in her cheerleader outfit firing the gun is one of the more iconic images from this movie. Firstly speaking, I find that it's one of those more enduring images that represents a great time in low budget movie making. Now that image was a major influence on Joss Whedon when he created Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The outfit was designed by John Muto who served as the movie's production designer. He started out as an animator and worked on the Forbidden Zone before working for Roger Corman on Battle Beyond the Stars and Galaxy of Terror, both released in 1980. Night of the Comets was the first movie that he worked on as a production designer, in fact, before going on to work on such movies as Night Flyers, Flowers in the Attic, Home Alone and Species. Naturally, the zombies have to be included, but um, I almost didn't include the policeman because, well, spoiler, the scene was just a nightmare. Um, it didn't actually happen, but I know if I don't include him, I will only be asked why. In the original script, there were no zombies and they were simply added to bring peril to the story, but I can't imagine this movie without them now. When devising the concept drawing, I wanted this to be reminiscent of the artwork found on the side of an arcade cabinet a sort of shoot 'em up game, with the villains illustrated at the bottom in a row. And as for the colours, I wanted to use the colours of Sam's cheerleader outfit. When Night of the Comet was released in the US, it made 3.5 million on its opening weekend. And, I don't have to get to say this, most of the critics got it. They praised its performances, the script, the humour and the production values, and it's remained a cult classic ever since. If you haven't seen it yet and you like such movies as Day of the Triffids or Dawn of the Dead, but you'd like it served with a big dollop of 1980s on top, then be sure to check out this movie. But if you have seen it before, and it's been a while, I think it's time to go back and watch it again, don't you? Right, I'm done. I just need to sign it. I want to remind myself that the year is 2022 now. Thank you for joining me today and keeping me company. As ever, I hope that was of interest to you and that you approve of the final painting. If so, perhaps you'll help me out by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you very much to everybody that joined in and voted for this movie. I hope to do this again in future, so if you would like to have your say on future videos, make sure to click the subscribe button and keep an eye on all the relevant pages. As ever, you'll find the links for them in the description. If you are new around here, make sure to check out the rest of the channel. There are many, many more movie tribute paintings to be found there. So thank you once again, and until next time, good night out there, whatever you are.